most importantly, Brad Pitt's performance in said movie. Hmm. I was just so pumped up, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> I actually went home, I made something to eat, and I sat there and watched The Way of the Gun because I just, I needed to do something. I knew I couldn't go to sleep. I think the most underestimated part about Brad Pitt's performance in that movie yeah. is he's not just uh, a Nazi hunting Jewish American soldier. Okay. He also is a brilliant, brilliant Italian. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop it right now. <laughs> Oh, that was so perfect. That killed me. His it really role did. as the Italian filmmaker is... Oh. It's Oscar-worthy. Oh, in my eyes. man. I could He's see so him being smooth. nominated. He is so smooth. Um, all right. For anyone who didn't see the movie and is actually listening in to hear my review of it, I'm going to make it short and sweet. It was fabulous. Tarantino did an incredible job with it. But above that, the acting in it. Mm. And there, were, and another thing that I, I don't really notice this kind of stuff in movies. Some of the camera angles in that movie yes. were phenomenal. Yes, and I don't usually notice things like that. But for me to actually notice it, and you know, for the you know the normal movie movie goer to notice something like that, you know, it just kind of sticks out. And it's the, it, yeah, the camera yeah. work, especially um, at that one scene with the baseball bat, where they just kind of kept panning from mm -hmm. one face to the other to the other mm -hmm. to the other like back and forth right. oh man that was great i yeah. loved it um there was another one that oh, i can't think of it right now but yeah i mean like you said the camera work was perfect um just go see it i mean what are you waiting for really Christoph, if you haven't seen it yet please go get it um, go get it in you if you want my summer my summer pick if you like anything tarantino's done whether it be pulp fiction the kill bills um Anything he's touched in his career, you're, you'll enjoy this because it's a little bit of everything. And Chris Toff Waltz as Colonel Hans Landa. Well done. Well done indeed. Um, I'm just going down the list here. Everyone I'm looking at here was absolutely fabulous in that movie. I can't think of yeah. anything I would have changed. Yeah, there were some good performances. I liked it. So, yeah, it was good. Go see it. It's, uh, what, it's almost three hours long. It's two and a half. Yeah, two and a half, I think. But yeah, it's well worth the price of admission. Definitely. Um, one recommendation I can give to all the viewers, if you're going to see it at the Sealands Grove Cinema, um, be sure to wear pants with pockets. Therefore, if you have to place your movie ticket anywhere, you can do it <laughs> uh, places else, uh, pla other places Stop. than your pants and your mouth because you may be denied admittance. <laughs> admission. So... Um, but go see it, and Glorious Bastards was fabulous. Obviously, um, the number one in the box office right now, followed up closely by District 9. G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra, Time Traveler's Wife, Julie and Julia, Shorts, G-Force, and rounding out the top ten, Harry Potter, Half-Blood Prince, and The Ugly Truth. So, um, I know that was only nine. I don't want to read the last one. Give it to me. It was just the goods. I, wow. I expected it to be better. I mean, I haven't seen it. I don't know what the movie itself is like, but I expected right. it to rank a little bit higher. Right. So I'm a little upset by that. Mm. But um, So there you have it. If you get a chance to see Halloween 2, Taking Woodstock, The Final Destination in 3D, or Big Fan, um, good luck, um, happy hunting, and we still recommend please seeing Inglorious Bastards. Yes. Definitely worth your money. Mm-hmm. And uh, coming out next week, Gamer, Extract, Carriers, All About Steve, No Impact Man, the documentary. Hmm. Can you give me anything on any of those? Uh, I know Gamer is the new one with Gerard Butler. Yeah, that's the only one I'm familiar with. What, what were the other two, like, the two underneath that? Extract and Carriers. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm really um, not. Um, Extra, Mike Judge directed it. Mike Judge? Yeah. Oh, 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 I know what this one is. Jason Bateman. Then oh, Bateman. right. Yeah. Oh, fourth guy in it's Ben Affleck. I know yep. I'm not going to see that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and uh, Carriers, it's a horror flick. Um, Do people carry things in it? Four friends fleeing a viral p pandemic soon learn that they are more dangerous than any virus because I guess... Oh, they carry heavy suitcase. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's, what it, that's actually what it said. That's why they're so dangerous. <laughs> what, are they in danger of, like, dehydration from just being wiped out from carrying the suitcase? or No, they're in danger of lower back pains. <laughs> so, actually, that's probably a pretty good informative movie as well. 
I worked at a labor factory for a couple of years right out of high school. I developed lower back pains and to this day. Now stop it. To this day, I can't sleep on soft cushions. <laughs> so we should make a movie about it. I think they just did. It's called Carriers. Carriers. <laughs> oh. oh, and there I am. I'm Frank. I, I play Frank. Actually, Christopher Mal <laughs> Christopher Maloney from uh, Law and Order SVU plays Frank. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's a horror movie. Well, he's horrible. So. I always thought he was more of a comedic guy. Well, he's so versatile. <laughs> Gosh, he can do it all. I hope he doesn't develop real lower back pain. I hope he's not like a method actor and he's no. really carrying around a heavy suitcase I'm everywhere. I'm sure every actor took proper precautions. They're a trained stuntman to actually carry the heavy suitcases. <laughs> Out of the <laughs> pandemic ridden. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. And oh, that'll be I'm it. Sorry. That very well may be the final tiet uh, the, <laughs> oh, for the stop. summer series. <laughs> and uh, if it is, boy, we certainly went out on a high note. <laughs> you could say that. Well, you want to give us your sign off here? Do you have a sign-off? You should have worked on a sign-off for Travis at the theater. Well, people can't see that. That was my sign. All right. Um, I guess that's it. I think we'll just play some music then. Wait. What? The theme. What about it? We have to go over it for all of Do our we? listeners. Is that necessary? All right. We can extend it till 2 a.m. I think we can ext extend it indefinitely. I don't know if we have that many songs in the arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. What do you want to do here? Just play songs or are you going to tell everyone what your theme was? No, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to tell anyone, frankly. I would like to get out of this show without even announcing it. You know what we should do? What? We should keep it up. Dot, dot, dot. Ellipses? What are you talking about? <laughs> An unsolved mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you every opportunity in the world. <laughs> you had one job. I pointed at the computers. I snapped my fingers. Oh, man. I didn't know that was code for unsolved mystery. I blew it. <laughs> the finger pointing and finger snapping is clearly code for unsolved mystery. <laughs> ah, we're sitting in a dark room. Yeah, please, turn a light on over there, weirdos. We can't. Seth can't even read the lyrics over there. <laughs> he doesn't need to. <laughs> he knows all the lyrics to China Girl. <laughs> all right, we're playing some body. We are done here.